welcome to this edition of Your High School Sports. I'm your host, Roddy Woods. Mr. Blevins is back off his honeymoon. And Mr. Reddick is here. And we're here to talk about nothing but high school football. Chris has got a rundown from the Greenville Elizabethan game last week. We talked to Bart Lines. He's going to be here. A big win for Science Hill on senior night. So, hey, let's jump into things around the nation, across the region, sponsored by Buddy's Barbecue right here in Sevierville. So, further to do, you saw the game. I was there on the field. This time I was on the field. And you say, mm-hmm. well, I've been asking Bart all year long. I've asked people, is Greenville for real? Greenville is a real team. They're for real. Sh- shall I continue? You shall continue. <laughs> I want to know. All right, he wants to know, is Greenville for real? Well, guys, you know that this has been the game that everybody has marked on their list. They've been very excited about this game coming up. Now, these two teams come from a 4A school, so you're thinking, well, they're two 4A schools, but let me tell you, these two 4A schools play like they're 6A schools, and that's why everybody had the Greenville-Elizabethan game marked for the matchup, and it lived up to the billing. This time, normally, you know, guys, I usually shoot from up top, but I said I got to get down in on the ground and get the feel of this game, and I want to tell you before I even start talking about the game, just the intensity and the feel and the just the, the oh man it's, it's hard to even describe but electrifying i guess i could say from the fans to the players coming out through the helmets i mean this was like big time this felt like a college game so all i got to say is this was probably one of the most intense high school football games that i was able to witness i mean there was a lot of grit grind uh Hits, then it was just oh, all right. So anyway, let's get into it. I want, I want before you get into okay. it. I want to hear Chris's. He always he. We talked about Greenville. We've talked about them all year long. They've been number one. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing that I want to know from Chris when he talks about the game is is yeah. We're going to talk about the players. I know you're going to talk about some of the size differences you saw out there in the field and some of the grit like you talked about. But I want to know about some of the coaching. I mean, we got Witten versus oh, you know man. Greenville's coach. Exactly. Yeah. That that right there in itself feels like a college game too. Oh, My man. great minds of oh, high yeah, school yeah, football. Yeah, so yeah. When you describe the game, I want to hear a little bit about the two coaching and how it was oh, back and forth. He, the he coaching back and forth. Oh yeah. man, it's it's like a chess match. Man. I mean, these <laughs> these two coaches. I mean, it was like they were players on the field too, from the coaching standpoint. I mean, and Sean, uh, you know, I use that word intensely. Sean was very intense. And, uh, man, he was doing some serious coaching. I mean, he, he always found himself kind of sneaking and crawling out on the field, you know, trying to persuade <laughs> his coach to, you know. And uh, so, I mean, it was just so fun. to watch. It was just fun to watch all around, like I said, from the fans to the coaching to the players. It was just uh, one incredible. You know, my buddy's barbecue cup is trying to disappear from me. But it was uh, – anyway, let's get going. So, you got some highlights? Yeah, that's why I said let's get oh, started. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, let's, let's get it started. So, Elizabeth gets the ball first, and uh, you know what? Elizabeth had a little different game plan. They said, look, we're going to spread, which they always have a spread offense, but we're going to go ahead and attack with the pass, and that's what they did, and right off the bat, they're making completions, and they're moving right down the field. I'm like, okay, Coach Witten is ready to attack and really go ahead and strike first, put some points on the board, and make a statement. Well, they had a nice drive, but they got stopped, and then give the ball over to Greenville. And one thing about Greenville is, they do not like to be stopped. So Greenwood comes, marches down the field. They put up the points first to seven. And then we get the ball back. It's still in the first quarter. And I was like, man, we're going tit for tat here. We strike with a big play from Carter Everett to Parker Hughes, a big 72-yard touchdown pass, which, man, the Elizabethan crowd, I mean, they were just jumping for joy because that was a big-time play. And if you noticed and followed Greenville, nobody's really scoring. So that was a nice shocker there, especially in the first quarter. So when that happened, I think Greenville understood we've got a game ahead of us. This is a real test. I don't think they've seen seven. They didn't, you know, you look on the scoreboard. I don't think they've ever seen seven. 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 Yeah, first. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, in Greenville fashion, what do they do? They march back down and they get 14 just before the first quarter. So I was like, you know what, guys? We may actually have a high-scoring offense or high-scoring. Uh, score. Now, you would think that 
because they both score a lot of points, but they haven't really played teams to this caliber. So you think once two high caliber teams are going to play that the points are going to kind of drop. Mm -hmm. So I was going to think, okay, that was just kind of a fluke first quarter, 14-7. It's going to start slowing down. No, no. <laughs> Greenville keeps pushing the gas. They make it 21-7. But you know what? We said, hey, we're right there with you. 21 -7. Then um, Greenville comes back, makes 28 to 14. But you know what? We hanging right in there. We come back, we strike, we get another touchdown. Now the cool thing about what's starting to happen now is um, they utilize Corey Russell in an interesting play that you can see on the highlights there, to where looks like he's going to do a running play, which is, we, we didn't run all night. And uh, they trick it, stops. You know Corey's a quarterback too, and they find the freshman. Uh, Bryson Rollins in the end zone, and guess what? We got a game. 28 -20. You're down a touchdown, but you know why it's 28 20? And which this shocked me because, you know, they're not used to blocking on a PAT <laughs> or even lining up for PAT. Oh, yeah. But they brought the pain on this one. They got a ball the field. Yeah, block, block the extra point. yeah, so made it 28 20. So everybody, just like I'm right now, they're like, oh my gosh, we really have a game going on. And, uh, you know, um, I didn't know what was going to happen at that point, right? At that point, I felt that we really had a chance to... Well, man, it was on your side. Yeah, you know, because, I mean, you got to imagine when nobody's scoring on Green, we already put three touchdowns off. You're like, okay. And, and, and the thing is, that gives the team confidence, too, because you're like, okay, now we're in the, we're in the, we're in the groove. I think we can, uh, we, can, we, can, we can win this game. Right. But once again, you got to stop. Greenville and uh, like I said, it's not like Greenville played the perfect game. Uh, there's been there was a couple touchdowns that were called back in the game. Actually, Greenville could have went up really heavy just before the half, but they had some problems controlling the time there when they had the ball inside the ten, and they uh, time ran out on them. They ended up throwing a pass and not calling a timeout. I think it was just some, some bad time management there. But anyway, let's put it back up to 28-20. You got to stop Greenville. And you don't stop Greenville. You didn't stop Greenville. I mean, you got Cade Ballard big and strong there. You know, anytime they get inside the five, I was telling you this off camera, yeah. you know, they run the Cade train. I mean, they, just, they, they normally spread the whole game, but when they get inside the 10, they just all kind of come together. I spilled my water there. And I'm just play. Spilled my water, but uh, they run that Cade train, and boom, it's just hard to stop. But, you know, when you look at Greenville mm -hmm. from top to bottom, we, we've saw, we've watched them for the last three or four years. <laughs> You want to stop? No, no. <laughs> the last three or four years, Greenville has just been Greenville, mm -hmm. and it's it's hard to beat a team like that. They've got all the got all the necessary weapons. You got a quarterback that's brought up in the house of football. You've got everything, and the same thing we talked about down the road. There, they are hard to beat. If you want to beat Greenville, you guys go out there and do the Fulton thing. Well, I think too though with Greenville beating Elizabethan though. Yeah. I think it also shows a few teams, we talk about this every year, maybe a little bit of a blueprint of what to do against mm -hmm. Greenville, which maybe is spread them out, try to strike her like you said, and then just never let down, like don't let their momentum overtake your success you have right. out there. Right. Because that's what a lot of times Greenville does to you, is even though you might be doing some good things out there, they shut you down just by, well, just pure just points at the points. If you give them the ball, you already should know from the beginning that they're going to score a touchdown. Yes, so you know, you know the next play, next possession, you need to score a touchdown. Yeah. And if you don't, the next time you need to score a touchdown, because they're going to score again. So don't so get it. yourself all worked up and they get up 14 to nothing or 14 or 20 to 1 to 14 or whatever you said before. Yeah. I, I think that's what Elizabethan was good, and that comes from good coaching, good leadership, mm -hmm. uh, players that understand that and practice on the practice field, and that's why Elizabethan had a good chance to beat Greenville yeah. and was right there to the very end, which it sounds to you like they had a lot of momentum. They they had that, what I talk about, swagger. When swag. you get swagger back up into a yeah. big, high rivalry team like Greenville, too, and you have a chance, and you got them on the kind of on the ropes a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. puts a little bit different feeling in your body, which makes you a little one step slower, or yes. makes you one step, you know, you take a exactly. step back to you, yeah. forward, whatever it may be. They're not used to doing that. You should yeah. just flowingly just run Doing over. their thing. Well, yeah. well, here was the key, and that, like you just said, running over people. Here's the key, key thing is Greenville knew they had the upper hand because, um, you know, if you were at the game or if you heard the game, this game mm -hmm. actually was on TV as well. Huh. Uh, Greenville keeps doing what Greenville does. They yes. don't change it. They only really ran about four or five plays. But the difference was Greenville has a physical presence that just kind of outweighed ours. And mm -hmm. they also have skilled players mm -hmm. that, uh, 
So even though you know they what's had, coming, you, they just gonna keep. Well, they're they're so good at it. Well, right? here's the thing: is you know what's coming, but you don't know who's coming. All right, let's just name oh, some got names. It, got it. You got <laughs> you got Dorian Carter, run uh, pretty much like a running back receiver, big, huge, strong. You get him the ball. Can you stop him? You got, of course, Cade Ballard, dual threat, quarterback who can run the ball, who also can throw the ball. Can you stop him? You got great running backs. Gillespie. Oh, yeah, by the way, you got Youngblood. Uh, and they are good, strong, north-south runners. Can you stop him? And then how about, um, oh, God, I can't think of his name anymore. He's commit to Wake Forest. So I don't know why his name's not hitting me right now. Big, huge receiver. My gosh, there's one play there. I mean, you saw in the highlights there. I mean, he's just like a big man. Right? So, so the thing is, you know what they have. So the key is we've got to find a way to stop, to stop them. And uh, you, you want big things to happen, too. And this is what I like about Elizabeth, too, because uh, by no, no means, Greenville played a flawless game. They actually fumbled the ball twice. Kate right. fumbled the ball twice, but he, he recovered his own fumble. So even though, you know, they can have big, strong – game and move the ball, turnovers can make a big difference too. Also some things that was affecting both teams, personal fouls, you know, and yeah. the reason why that was coming about, like I said, just because of how both teams really wanted this game bad, you're going to have some of those things like that. You just got to make sure you're not on the side that's making those mistakes. Right. So, well, saying. you know, you know, I can see this game happening again in the playoffs. So thanks for all what you've done. Yeah. That was great because, you know, when you have a game like that, you got to get as much as you can. So we'll know. Playoff time is in three weeks. Yeah, that was a good preseason yes, to hopefully would. watch these two yes, teams match would. up again. This around the nation and across the region has been sponsored by Buddy's Barbecue. When we come back, Bart Lyons is going to join us, and he's going to talk about his Hilltoppers. We'll be right back. the right services you need from a name you can trust at Crescent Center Drugs. Whether it's hormone replacement therapy or if you need to update your immunizations for flu, pneumonia, or shingles, Crescent Center Drugs has a professional and friendly staff always ready to take care of you. That's why for many years, Crescent Center Drugs has been your good neighbor pharmacy. Right now, getting your medicine is fast and easy when you sign up for the IVR system. It's simple. Once your prescription is filled, your box is scanned, and you instantly receive a phone call or text for pickup. Visit Crescent Center Drugs inside the Crescent Shopping Center. Welcome back to your high school sports. I'm Roddy Woods. Now I'm on the line with our correspondent in the Northeast, Bart Lyons. Bart, let's talk about your Hilltoppers. Let's talk about them Hilltoppers. Got the big, uh, got the big senior night win over Morristown West. And our kids played really well and was able to get that running clock and get get a lot of kids some some playing time. Some kids that have never even played varsity action got some playing time Friday night. So. All those kids are excited and fired up and getting ready for a big game on Friday. Yes, we we'll go down to Jeff County and take uh, take uh, our, our record down there and try to get the still get try to get in the playoffs. And Spencer Riley, of course, he's the head coach at uh, at Jeff County now, former University of Tennessee player, mm -hmm. and uh, going to mm -hmm. try to go down there and not let him sneak up on us like he did last year. I know Spencer will have him ready, but our guys is playing pretty good right now. Hopefully, we can. Keep the momentum. We keep the momentum and keep on winning, guys. All right. Hey, listen. You know, the big game last week was Greenville versus Elizabethan. And I was talking to Chris. Uh, we were talking about, about some things about how Greenville, they are a big physical football team. Is that what, that's what overpowered Elizabethan? Is that what happened? Well, uh, Elizabethan's got a big club, but Coach Ballard's got a got a one heck of a ball team down here in Greenville and uh, from what I was told they, they only run about four or five plays and that's the, the, the only uh, the only plays they were used from their playbook so uh, I know Coach Witt and those guys had the cyclones prepared they had them ready and it was a heck of a ball game we were we were broadcasting game on, on the on the phone we was watching the game live on Facebook and uh Man, there's a lot of credit guys go to uh, the Cyclones for coming down here and at least competing with the uh, Green Devils. No one else this season has uh, played them at that level, but uh, two good teams, and they, they may see each other again in the playoffs. That, that's correct right there because right there, the only thing that stands in, in the middle of them is Anderson County. And, you know, the, now Greenville will probably be their number one, seed to be seeded number one. 
I'd say Anderson County be seated number one down in down in the Knoxville area, and Elizabethan will be seated two. So that means Anderson County and Elizabethan will meet like they did last year. But let me ask you this: as we get closer to the playoffs, Bart. With Science Hill being where they're at, with Farragut losing last Friday night to Bearden, last Thursday night to Bearden, you know, does that put you guys right there where you need to be at? I, I think so. You know, we're looking at maybe the number two or the number three seed, uh, and there's some there's some positives and some negatives to each one of those. If you go number three, we go on the road, we go to Udawa, play a very good Udawa team. If we finish number two, we stay at home and maybe host Bradley Central. But the bad thing is, if you make it past that, you got that team in there in Maryville, the Maryville Rebels, if you get to the second round. So, yes. nevertheless, 6A football, yes. uh, our league, our league has, been, has been wild and crazy this year. But Maryville is still Maryville, guys, and they're, they're a juggernaut. Yes, they are. They Coach Hunt has got them playing miracle football, and, and I know what you're talking about, Bart. Hey, we appreciate you taking a moment out of your time. I know you're getting ready to referee some basketball. So you take care of yourself, and we'll talk to you next week. And what's that phrase? Hey, guys, as always, go choppers. All right. Bart Lyons, our correspondent in the Northeast, will be right back here on your high school sports right after this. services you need from a name you can trust at Crescent Center Drugs. Whether it's hormone replacement therapy or if you need to update your immunizations for flu, pneumonia, or shingles, Crescent Center Drugs has a professional and friendly staff always ready to take care of you. That's why for many years, Crescent Center Drugs has been your good neighbor pharmacy. Right now, getting your medicine is fast and easy when you sign up for the IVR system. It's simple. Once your prescription is filled, your box is scanned, and you instantly receive a phone call or text for pickup. Visit Crescent Center Drugs inside the Crescent Shopping Center. Welcome back to your high school sports. I'm your host, Roddy Woods, along with Chris Blevins and Chris Reddick. We've heard from Bart Lyons. We've heard about Greenville. But we have a segment now that's called Big Play, Big, big Game Big Game Performance. Both of y'all agree? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's all Greenville. <laughs> <laughs> all the big Game Performance. There's also a few more. I mean, obviously, we're not, lead, we're not just going to go and skip Cy it. But, Cyclones, too. Big players. Yeah, lot, from, I mean, that... Everybody that played that game, they were Okay, so we just yeah. give it to both teams. Just give it to that, yeah. Oh, yeah. to that game. All right, there it is. Big game performance goes to the Elizabeth and Greenville game. <laughs> All the players. All that the game. players. All right, it's that time for it. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting hurt, too. Both of them. Both See, them. You said it. We're going to talk about that one day. All right, it's time for the Ball Corporation Games of the Week. There was only two. Two games. Right now, guys, we're getting into playoff time. It's like I talked to Coach Courtney a couple of weeks ago, and he says, I said, Coach, when you start talking about playoffs? Every day. Mm. You talk about playoffs every day because now you've got to win out. Yeah, it matters. Yeah, It matters. So, you know, I used to, I used to teach Coach Corals at Maryville. I said, Coach, we talk about playoffs? No, we ain't talking about playoffs, <laughs> Rodney. We ain't talking about it. But, see, other teams are not like Maryville. Yeah, but they, he already knew they were going. Yeah, he, he, he didn't even know, talk about it. Yeah. He said, no, we ain't talking about that, Rodney. Okay. All right, so the two big games of the week, Thursday night's game, it's a VLT game. We're going to throw something out there for you, Mark Packer. You, our fans can come watch you on VLT. It's Knox Fulton. Fulton has had a good season this year, mm -hmm. along with Knox West. Old Marstown West coach, Lamar Brown, against Coach Black. Fulton will come ready to play. Yeah, I think Fulton's got their early season struggles behind them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they are – game tested when it comes to playoffs too so we just talked about not talking about the playoffs they already know they're going to be there too so yes. i think they're ready for this game i think west with uh 
you know, a lot to prove as well. But I think is it at Fulton or at West? It's at West. Uh, so that's that. Now that's an advantage. You know, we go we get to these games here at the end of the season. We talk about I talk about at least y'all. It's coin flip games here. Mm-hmm. You know, emotions and things like that go a long way in the game. I think Fulton has a little bit of the edge because they've been there before, yep. and they also have a good solid team and a foundation. They've already lost early in the season. Now they came back and they are. Like I said, game tested and ready to go. And I think they'll be. They are looking for the playoffs, but they know that each game yeah. matters from here on out because when they get to the playoffs, their seed's going to count. They know what to expect. So I th- I'm going to give the little edge to Fulton. I'm going to keep it simple. I mean, you got a, a veteran quarterback who's been starting for four years. You've got the top DB who's back from the injury last year, who's committed to a D1 school, and. You know, they, they, they look like they're just ready to cruise into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's not going to be an easy game going into West, but like Chris said, I'm giving it to Fulton. All right. Now, in the Northeast, you know, we did, I meant to talk to Bart about it, but we'll talk to him next week. It's the Musket Bowl. It's Davy Crockett versus Davey. Daniel Boone. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, look, both teams right now, you know, it's like early in the season, we, we, we heard the, the newspaper in Tri-Cities talked about this is not your grandma's team. Mm-hmm. We know Crockett. Crockett's for real. Mm-hmm. And Boone is real. Charlie Cole is real. You know, there's a song that goes, Daniel Boone was a man. <laughs> was a bi- this one's called Charlie Cole was a man. He's a big one. Was a big man. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Charlie Cole train. Can they get cry? Can they get cry? Oh, my goodness. You know what, guys? This is one of the unbelievable mo- moments in life that you want to take advantage of. If you're not a fan of high school football, you need to become one this week because you have a historical game called the Musket Bowl. Now, everybody knows about the Musket Bowl, the tradition of Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. You know the story. If you're from Tennessee, you've studied it in Tennessee history. Well, they have a traditional game every year. You used to play it even in the mini dome. Well, it really only counted for a pride game. The right. Pride but Trophy. There's no pride this but year. This year, Big the game. Musket Bowl has changed into almost the Super Bowl because the first time, at least in my life, I don't know, maybe someone else can maybe comment and let me know that this has counted for a conference championship. So there is much more than just the Musket Bowl Pride Award. <laughs> there is a conference <laughs> championship on line. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, you have. Two outstanding football teams with outstanding players that put a lot of points on the board each and every week. This is going to be a shootout. I'm excited about it. I'm ready to get my pick, but I'm going to yield to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll make it short and sweet because that's exactly the same way I feel about this. Because sometimes we talk about this game and it is just the Pride Bowl, yeah. or you know, uh, <laughs> or what you call it, you know, you, the game of life. You can't really have but anyway. Uh, Davy Crockett, though, has a, quarter, Crockett. has a quarterback. Yes, he do. Yes, they do. He's, his name has slipped my mind. Real Larkin. Quick. Yeah. Larkin. There yeah. we go. They're good. If you ain't seen him play, mm. then, you know, he's right up there with some of the top quarterbacks we have in the state of Tennessee, and he can sling the ball, and he is not shy about it. He'll throw it 200 mm-hmm. times if they let him throw it. <laughs> Uh, I think that's what's going to be the key to the game. I think it is going to be a close one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it's going to be a shootout. I don't think it's going to be down to a field goal. I think it's going to be about a touchdown, 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 like you just talked <laughs> yeah, about. It's going to be I a think fun you've got to have a quarterback, <laughs> just like you have on the other side of the ball yeah. you just talked about. Hard-nosed guy over there. We talked. We got a gunslinger on the other side. So I'm going to I'm going to give the spot edge to Crockett, but in a battle. I'm talking. I think the score is going to be 45 to 48. Uh-oh. Or we'll make another touchdown. We'll make it 54. <laughs> Be so it's gonna be a fun one. I tell you what, this is gonna be real exciting because, like Chris said, you got Larkins on one side. He loves to throw the ball, spread the offense around. They got good weapons, also good running backs. So they're they're kind of like a, a little mini Greenville as far as how they play and the mm-hmm. weapons they have. But on the other side, you got a team that they like to round and pound. They just had now. I talk about Charlie Cole a lot, but Harold, who is gonna probably be one of my top performers too this week. Harold, at quarterback, last week almost had 200 yards by himself. Wow. And so they're going to ruin the ball. And he still threw for a, a touchdown, or maybe even two touchdowns. I think he threw 40, 50 yards in the air, but one of them was for a touchdown. So you've got, you know, you can call him a dual threat quarterback, but maybe he's, he's really more of a, run, a running back type right. quarterback. And like I said, we've already talked about Charlie Cole, and a lot of so who's your pick? schools are on him. Who's your my, pick? My pick, Chris is going Crockett. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm going to have to. 
I'm gonna give an edge to I saw Crockett play, I saw Boone play, and I'm gonna give an edge to Crockett. Oh whoa. Crockett. Right. We're going to Crockett. <laughs> going to that Crockett. Boone is Chris mad, 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 but if they mad. run the ball on Boone's side and they control the clock a little yeah, bit, yeah. keep the score a little bit lower down. than I might have a chance. They're gonna, gonna have a chance. But, but here's the pro- here's the problem though with Boone. You know, when you, when you do the ground and pound, you expect to go two or three, you know, three, three point five, and, and you win. But when you got when you got Charlie Cole and Harold, these are breakout play. Like if you look at their stats, they get a sixty-five yard touchdown. So it's, so it's kind of hard to control the clock when you score so fast. just so yeah, fast. Yeah. It's like a pass play. So there you go. It's I don't know. Chris said it may be a shootout. Big here. game this week. Crockett and Crockett and Boom for the for the conference championship. All right, it's time for our top ten. Well, Your high school sports top ten. Yep, it's changed up just a little bit here. We're not going to change much to the top, so we're going to start at the top. We got number one Alcoa. We still got Greenville at two, Maryville at three, uh, Knox Fulton at four with a big game this week. We also here's where to change a little bit. We got Anderson County at five, Elizabethan at six. Even with the loss to Greenville, Elizabethan is a, still a top team, so we're we're not taking them down very far. Uh, at number seven, Davy Crockett. At number eight, Farragut. Number nine, Oak Ridge. And we still have at number ten, Greenback. It's still undefeated in the season. Yes, yes. I, th- I think our top ten from top to bottom is strong. We can we can compete with anybody. Oh, oh is it too early to start talking gold balls from this area? Yeah, we wait. That's another show. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Do you see any in that top I do. Yes. I see a lot in that top ten. <laughs> I, see, I, see I see one, two, three, I see four. One. I, I see four. Three. I see one. Three. I see four. I'm joking. I see four. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you stay here because we'll have all your playoff coverage coming up real soon because the playoffs kick off in three weeks. So we're we're excited. Playoffs brings excitement to your high school sports staff. If you'd like to comment on anything that goes on on our show, go to yourhighschoolsports.com. And there's a comment page on our comment. If you like our, you don't like our top ten, give us your top ten. If there's anything you'd like to discuss, let us know, and we'll discuss it on next week's show. For Chris Blevins and Chris Reddick, I'm Roddy Woods. I'll see you next week.